What is up, bros and brats? I'm Slasher44, and today I'm giving you five tips to improve your kill death ratio in Black Ops 3. And I think these are some really, really good ones. I have a lot more than this. Like, I have a list of probably 15 to 20 tips written down, but I'm giving you the best five today. If you would like to see more of these, if you want to see more top five tips, that kind of thing, hit that like button and let me know what you want to see in the comments section below. But without further ado, let's get into it because these are some pretty damn good tips. So, these are in no particular order. Number one isn't any better than number five. They're no, no different. They're all just pretty damn good tips if you ask me. So tip number one, button layout. Button layout is super, super important, especially in this game and advanced warfare, more than you would think. So there are two button layouts you can use and one other option where you don't typically have to change your button layout. But option number one, you can buy a scuff controller. Scuff controller will help you greatly. It adds extra buttons to the controller. The problem is, is it's generally over $200 with tax and shipping and all of that stuff. I get that. And I'm not sponsored by them, by the way. I just use their product. That's one option. There are two other options that can kind of help you out in the same way. There's two button layouts that really, really help. Number one is called the stick and move. This one switches your X button or jump button A on Xbox with your right stick button. This allows you to move around and jump and aim at the exact same time. This is very, very good in this game because there's a boost jump in this game. So obviously jumping is very, very important. The button layout I use is the tactical button layout. The tactical button layout switches your crouch button with your melee button. So your right stick is now your crouch, and that's pretty much that. The reason why I use that is because I have a scuff controller. I have my jump button set, set to one of my paddles on the back, and my slide or crouch button is then on my thumbstick. Therefore, I can control all my movement without taking any of my thumbs off the thumbsticks. Therefore, I can be aiming at all times and sticking on target. You may not think this is a big deal, and you may be thinking, I don't need to do this, I'm fine the way I'm playing, but then there's that one player you were playing with who is jumping around and killing people, and it's not even fair. I switched to a scuff controller last year in Advanced Warfare, and it makes a huge difference, an instant improvement. I would say it takes three games to get used to the controller, and then an instant improvement to your kill-death ratio. If you can't afford one, there are other options. There's different button layouts. The stick and move is probably the best one, but I definitely suggest trying it out. Tip number two. Tip number two is shitty specialist abilities. I know they're fun. I know there's a lot of specialist abilities that are a lot of fun, but they get you killed. This gameplay is a perfect example. I am using Nomad's Hive ability, and basically what that this does is it shoots these little grenades down onto the ground, and they pop up and kill people when they like run through a doorway. If you are camping, this is fantastic. The problem with it is it takes a second for it to kill them, kind of like the purifier, the flamethrower. The flamethrower, yes, it kills people if it, you hit them with it, but there's a brief second where they can just shoot you if you have it out, and it'll kill you no matter how much fire you hit them with, or ma no matter how many freaking little hive things explode and bees eat them alive they still have a chance to kill you so don't use shitty specialist abilities i know they're fun like th the whole bow and arrow thing outriders bow and arrow it's fun as hell to use but it's gonna screw with your kill death ratio because you're generally gonna be a little bit more accurate with a, a submachine gun or an assault rifle and kill people a little bit faster than you are with a bow and arrow because well you get one shot it's like shooting a sniper rifle from the hip at all times don't use shitty specialist characters. That's that's all I should need to say. Next up, choosing your kill streaks. This is number three. Choosing your kill streaks is actually very, very important. And a lot of people will say, oh, you need to use this kill streak to get this kill streak. But if you're not a good enough player to get some of those kill streaks, what's the point of using them? You're never going to get them, and they're never going to help you in the game. One of the best kill streaks in the game is the dart drone. You can shoot bullets out of it. You can kill people with it. Actually, you can shoot explosions out of the damn thing. It's really, really good. And and if you're a player who can't get those high kill streaks, use that and it'll let it get you a few kills. And then once you get better, once you become a better player, use those higher kill streaks. Don't use the ones that are going to build you up if you're only going to get them once every 10 games. Use the kill streaks you're going to get every single game. Look at this game, for example. 
The kill streaks I am using are perfect for me. I get two Cerberuses in this game and almost two Rap ships. I know I'm in that range where every game I might get my kill streaks. You should choose your kill streaks the exact same way. Once you become a better player, choose the better kill streaks. If you're a shitty player, choose the lower kill streaks. May not get you as many kills, but it'll help your kill death a lot more. Number four shoot from cover now this seems super super obvious but so many players don't do it and even i catch myself not doing this and it's very frustrating because you're going to see by this gameplay almost every time i die in this gameplay i'm not shooting from cover and what i mean is bullets in call of duty come out of your head you only have to have your head over cover to be shooting at someone therefore if you're shooting this is called a head glitch by the way if you're shooting from cover and they can only see your head and you can see their whole body this gives you an absolute huge huge advantage another way of shooting from cover is just giving yourself good angles angles where again the enemy can only see specific parts of your body but you can see their whole body one great example of this is shooting from behind a barrel there are many many barrels laying throughout every single map in this game if you're shooting from behind a barrel the only part of the body that the enemy can see is your head you can meanwhile see their entire entire body and you have a much larger, larger target to shoot at than they do. Now, you're going to play against a few good players who can pick off heads from behind barrels. Fair enough. That's fine. But, generally speaking, this will improve your kill-death ratio to a huge, huge extent. And finally, the mo la wow, I can't talk. The last and probably most important tip is map control, but with a huge, huge emphasis on reading your minimap. Players do not do this, and it is so, so frustrating, especially when you are playing with teammates. So, this tip is going to kind of incorporate a whole bunch of things. Number one, playing with friends is a huge, huge advantage, because generally you can trust those players. If they're, they run into someone behind you, they will tell you if they died, or they will tell you if they killed the person. When you are looking at your minimap, you are not looking for dots of enemies. I know that's what you think you're looking for, but it's not. You are looking for where your teammates are on the map. Therefore, if you know where your teammates are on the map, you will know where the enemy is spawning. So, what do I mean by this? If your entire team is on the right side of the map, the enemy team, especially if you're playing a game mode like Team Deathmatch or Kill Confirmed, which the majority of people play in this game, the enemies will then be spawning on the opposite or the left side of the map. If you are spawning at the bottom of the map, if you're all of your team's little triangles are at the bottom of the map, they're going to be spawning at the top of the map. They will be opposite of your team at all times. Now, of course, you want to pay attention. Keep one eye on the minimap to look for those little red dots to see if the enemies are anywhere near you. Also, I suggest using Sixth Sense because that kind of pops up and tells you if someone's really close to you. Also makes a noise. This will really, really help you to, it takes a little while to learn, it takes a little while to see, you'll notice in this gameplay, and by no means do I think this is the greatest gameplay in the world, but it demonstrated literally everything I'm talking about this video, and we'll get to that at the end. You'll see me all of a sudden notice my teammates are all on one side and run to the other side of the map because I know the team's going to spawn there and be able to pick up kills because I know the other team is at, at the other spawn. And then I can pick up kills and you'll know where your team is spawning and where their team is spawning. So again, when you're looking at that mini map, you want to look for your team, not their team. And that's a huge, huge advantage if you learn to do that properly. So... Let's go over these one more time. Button layout, this helps you move and shoot at the same time. You'll see me do this a lot throughout the gameplay. Shittiest specialist abilities. I am using a shitty specialist ability in this video right here. Don't do that. You'll notice every time I pull out my specialist ability in this uh, in this game, I die. Every single time. Choosing your kill streaks, I get my kill streaks twice in this video. You want kill streaks that you will get multiple times in one game, therefore helping you get more kills, therefore improving your kill death. Finally, shooting from cover. I don't do this properly in this game. There's a, pretty much every single time I die in this game, it's because I'm not behind cover while I'm shooting someone. 
while I'm shooting someone behind cover like I did at the beginning of the game, I'm always getting kills. And that's a huge, huge, hugely good tip. And then map control. You'll see me running in one direction, realize my team started spawning over there, switch, run the other direction, and I'm able to pick up kills. Those are all the tips I'm able to give you guys today. If you want to see more of these things, hit that like button. Check me out on Twitter if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or just want to know what's going on in my daily life. Twitter is the place to do so. Link in the description and subscribe for new Call of Duty videos every single day. Thanks for watching, guys, and until next time.